All right, and welcome back. As you can see, the shop is a little bit different. I've installed a paint booth, and I'm using that term loosely. And I'm trying to start to figure out how to paint the components myself. Up to this point, I've been priming with a rattle can SEM primer, self-etching primer, and it does very well for its intended purpose. But I don't think that this will hold up very well to a lot of wear and tear, people getting in and out and things of that nature. And so in my interior, where people are going to be moving, adjusting, touching, scraping against, I want to make sure I'm using a product that's a little more durable. And I just don't think that this is it. It may be the fact that I'm not doing nearly as much prep work as people would do with these components, with spray and things like that, but this works very well for what I have been using, which is just that contact surface between two different components, just to minimize that, that corrosion chance. As I've talked about before, I'm not painting the entirety of everything that I put into the wings and things like that, but I have been doing that with the fuselage. So I want something that's a little more durable. So I went down to Napa, actually, and got some uh, primer from uh, epoxy primer from Napa and it comes with the primer in the can plus a reducer to be able to put through the spray and it tells you the ratio and everything to, to do that and so I've been kind of playing around with that trying to make a, a good spray and in the test plates that I, I, I've been using some scrap pieces that I had lying around and I got to play a little bit with it and so I'm I don't have the finesse, again, I've, I've never done this before, but it does a well enough job, I think. In my test shoots, I've been able to get the coverage that I want, but it's got some orange peel, and I don't know that I, I mind terribly. Again, this is going to be the interior, uh, like this piece here is one of the footwells. It's not something you're going to get up to looking at every day, and what I have sprayed so far from, you know, a little far enough distance away, it looks just fine. And so I'm more worried of just getting it so that it holds up and when people get in and out of the airplane, it won't scratch away and, and I'll have to worry about coming back in and reapplying. So I'm, I think it's gonna be a good product for what I'm looking for. Now the exterior, either I'm gonna have to do a lot more practice to figure out how to get the finesse of spraying and get rid of the orange peel, or most likely I'll just send it out and have someone do the work for me. So that's, that's a much later date. So anyway, this video is going to be real quick. Again, there's there's lots of videos out there of how to paint. This is not one of them. This is just to kind of show something that I'm getting into, and I think it's going to be fun. We'll see how this all comes out, and I'll show you how I'm spraying and what I've set up on the inside of this uh, paint booth, and we'll get going from there. All right, let's see what we got. All right, and as you can see, this is the structure that I built just to hang uh, a couple components so I can spray them. Uh, you can see in the back, that's my two exhaust fans, just some simple box fans that I bought, and then cut the slit and taped around it to try to make a good exhaust. Now, I don't have a, a cover over the top, I don't have a ceiling, so it's not completely enclosed. Uh, the benefit of this uh, high pressure, low volume system is there's, there's not a lot of overspray. Uh, you see videos of people spraying a car in a booth or whatever, you see clouds of paint everywhere. There's not a lot of that here, so I don't have to worry so much about it. The one thing I do need to take into consideration is that uh, the shop, the, you know, the ceiling area, the roof area of the shop is dusty. A lot of dust does fall into this as the paint's drying. So we'll see how this turns out, and if it turns out that there's just too much dust in the air from stuff falling down from the rafters, then I might go ahead and put some kind of sheet over the top just to prevent that. Uh, but so far, this one, I started spraying uh, yesterday. Uh, I've been doing basically one uh, one coat, letting it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour, come in and spray a second coat, and, and then again another 45 minutes to an hour, and then a third coat. And then let it sit overnight and, and set and dry and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's turned out pretty decent. Now, if you look at the light, you will see orange peel. Again, not terribly concerned. Um, this is just the interior and at some point there's going to be a carpet kit and you'll only see the edges and corners uh, between the carpet kit. And so I'm not entirely, you know, I'm not real concerned about the orange peel at this point. But this is just a, a scrap piece that I had 
and decided to try to practice on. So uh, this is actually one of the, the wing skins that I had messed up. So now it's a, piece of, uh, a scrap piece. And so it's good for practice. So anyway, uh, over here I've got one of the floor pans um, that I'm going to go ahead and, and get. It's all prepped. I'm going to spray that and we'll see how that turns out. So, just kind of want to go over some of the results. Now, I'm being very careful of this because it's not fully dry as of yet. Uh, but this is uh, the results of, of what I sprayed earlier. This has got three coats on it. Um, it's, it's got quite a bit of orange peel. If you look at it close in the light, you see the orange peel. But again, this is one of the footwells, and it's the interior, so I'm not, I'm not all that worried about it. I don't need a, a gloss finish on the interior. Uh, I just want something that's going to protect it and I'm not going to have to worry about it, you know, just scratch it off on normal wear and tear. And I, I hope that this will, will meet that. So we're going to let this dry and then in a day or two we'll see um, what it looks like, how it stands up, and kind of kind of judge it from there. The one thing that's difficult with this style of priming is it, it is very time intensive. Um, between setting everything up, uh, all the prep work, and then uh, hanging it up and spraying, that alone is, is about 15-20 minutes worth of work uh, per piece, and then let alone the hour that you're letting. Uh, I actually sped up a little bit. I waited about 15 minutes and put on a second uh, coat on a couple of these. Um, so I'm going to see if that really makes a difference or not. That will help speed things up. But trying to let this dry and all that, it's, it's certainly going to take at least a day, if not two, uh, just because today's temperatures and the humidity and everything. But it's a lot slower, obviously, than just the Rattle Pan uh, SEM product. So we're going to kind of judge from there, but I'm, I've, kind of, I've kind of bit the bullet and said this is how I'm going to do the rest of the priming for the interior. Um, I was trying to figure out which pieces would be visible and which, one, uh, which pieces would not. But I think I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and prime everything on the interior just so I don't have to worry about and take that time to figure out uh, where to set things up. So we'll see as I go forward, but I think that's the general idea. So anyway, um, like I said, it's, it's an interesting process. Um, my first time spraying anything and overall very easy to do with, with the system that I have, um, but a lot more time consuming. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.